Hello and welcome to my shop. I'm Ryan Gravlin. Today I'm going to show you how to build a flip top uh, station for your CNC or any machines that you want to use. The goal of this was for me to save space using my large Inventables X carve. I have the 1000 by 1000 millimeter X carve and I wanted to save space, add some versatility, storage, and then utilize my media devices between my laptop and TV screens. Uh, I teamed up again with Fox Hall Woodworks uh, to come up with this design uh, and be able to share with everybody so that if you decided you could as well uh, build one for yourself. Uh, we came up with the assembly, uh, the main frame and structure based off the King James Extreme Assembly table over at King's Fine Woodworking. I'll link the description in the box above. Um, I built his Extreme Assembly table and it had this design uh, which just makes an incredibly strong structure. So you can not only use this for a uh, CNC machine, um, you can also mount extremely heavy tools to it. So the actual um, table that it sits on is a torsion box, so it will never move. We've uh, come up with some really good uh, holders for the gantry, so that when it flips around on all three axes, there's no strain on the gantry itself. Uh, I've also mounted it with Inventables products as well. Everything that I've used will be linked in the descriptions. It is a lengthy build um, to some extent, but nothing overly complicated at all. Uh, everything will be detailed out for you. In addition to the um, monitors and my computers and all tying it in together and have power to the station, I wanted to utilize its footprint uh, as well to make sure I had a lot of storage. These lower cabinets are big enough for your dust extraction hoses. The actual mounting pipe that we used is a steel pipe and I have a tunnel design inside the top here that makes it super easy to build. Comment, subscribe, like the video as well. Let us know how we're doing. Um, we put a lot of effort into the plans um, and this video. So um, any, any helpful tips or comments sure would be appreciated. We will have this in other sizes as, as well. Let's get started and uh, enjoy. All right, we're gonna start out by cutting sheets of plywood on the table saw. Because the sheets of plywood were so large, I had to store, cut them into more manageable sizes so that I could then uh, carry them easily and, and rip them down on my table saw. I then take them over to the chop saw, cut them down to their final lengths. I squared the left side first and then cut on the right. Now on to assembly. I used a piece of my uh, cutoffs and marked them on the end so that I knew where to stop the glue because you don't want to have glue inside the bridle joint. Used a right angle here so that I could line my pieces up. Use that same spacer uh, to line everything up so that uh, the distance would be equal on each side and I'd have a nice square bridle joint when I'm done. I used pin nails throughout just to temporarily hold it all together before I could get it into the clamps. All right, now I'm here uh, cutting the angle brackets. Um, 
that I will laminate together. I'm being sure to make sure everything's nice and square. It's a lot less clean up later. All right guys, I just got done laminating all the frame assembly all the way around for the bridal joints. Now I'm gonna uh, real quick laminate all the angle brackets and foot pads. And here I'm gluing them up like I did before with the uh, assembly. One thing to think about is make sure you don't drive pin nails through where you're gonna use your bandsaw. I did and ruined my bandsaw blade. I used a little jig here to keep all four sides nice and square. But you can mark your diagonal and keep the pin nails out of that area pretty easily if you think ahead. I just cut out the caster supports. Cut 12 of them, three times four all the way around the table. So I'm gonna do it just like I did with the angle brackets. Just kind of stack, stack three up, pin nail it, and then I'll put them all in the clamp after I'm done. And as you can see here, uh, it's just like before, I'm using whatever method I have. This time I had my table saw fence to help me line these up. Just use my fingers on the sides, use the table saw for the front, and uh, that helps make it a nice square lamination and again pin nails temporarily until i get them into the clamps use plenty of glue and always wipe it off Here I'm just going ahead and sanding off any glue squeeze out I had from my clamp up and uh, it makes it a lot easier than after you already glued together your bridal joints here. I'm using glue on both sides and uh, just slide it in nice and even. I know it's going to fit perfectly because of the spacer I used during uh, the lamination. And if these fight you a little bit, put them in a clamp, uh, but I'm just going to pin nail uh, that joint together once I get a nice square. A little tap here and there. A few pins on both sides and on to the next one. We're about to begin on assembling the angle bracket to the foot pad here. What I'm doing here is I'm uh, using a Forstner bit to drill down just a little bit uh, so that the head of the fasteners I'm going to use are below the surface of the wood. This will hit, help with fitment issues, uh, in this case the casters going on them. I also pre-drilled those and use my impact drill. A second person healer would really help, um, but do what you can. Then I use a little screw here near the uh, angle. And here I mark the middle of the frame assembly and then uh, the two upper supports I uh, put a piece of three quarter inch plywood in between them as a spacer and that way you can drill in your uh, your pipe flange. And then here I'm just marking the center and this will allow me to drill my lag screws through and uh, have them evenly spaced throughout. Again I'm countersinking with the Forstner bit here then I'll pre-drill and drive in the lag screws. I 
I measured the drill bit at five and a half inches there, just so I know not to go too far. These long lag screws are surprisingly easy and uh, effortless to drill in. They really grab and just pull their way through. You don't need anything super heavy duty to get these things driven through. I would, I would recommend an impact drill though. I am going to go ahead and work on the bottom cabinet so that I can then start putting together the entire structure. So this lower piece right there by my thumb. All right, here we are uh, beginning the lower cabinet. I'm using my Craig Foreman here to drill my pocket holes for me. Uh, obviously any pocket hole jig you have will work here. Setting it on the three quarter inch setting with an inch and a quarter screws. Uh, I love my machine, but obviously there's a lot of other methods, including dados you could do here. So now I'm just getting it on the edge, making sure that I get a nice, uh, a uh, straight joint, I guess. I just wanted to let you know how I'm assembling the lower cabinet structure. I cut a couple of spacers, put them in the middle here after I attach the sides, and use the square just to make sure it's all nice and squared up. And notice I'm screwing towards that spacer board. Uh, when you use pocket holes, they always try and move on you and they always try to move inwards. So if you put that spacer board there blocking it, you'll know you'll have a perfect line on your mark and uh, you don't have to fiddle with it, unscrew it, screw it, unscrew it until you get it nice and perfect. I use spacers for everything. If I use a, don't use a spacer, I'm using a clamp to make sure that those don't move on me. And here are the cross supports. This is what's giving the cabinet all of its strength. I just, uh, again, put some spacers underneath and uh, screw them to my side cabinets. I'm gonna go ahead and install my drawer slides here. I'm just putting a three quarter inch piece of uh, plywood underneath them for my spacing. A lot easier now that it's up on my cabinet than doing it on the ground. I'm gonna go ahead I still have several of the large uh, 5 16th by 5 and an 8 inch um, lag screws. So no harm in going ahead and putting one through the assembly into the leg assembly, the lower cabinet into the assembly. It's just going to be that much more help um, tie it all together. And you're gonna notice that I did not pre-drill here. These uh, lag screws are good enough, even without pre-drilling sometimes. I just wasn't able to get a bit in. And now I'm attaching the lower cabinet to the bridle joint upper assembly there on the sides, just with inch and a quarter inch screws. All right, now I'm ripping the back of the cabinet down on the table saw. And uh, you'll see here that the uh, total width was a little bit too, too much for my chop saw, so. I used the stop block, flipped it over, and uh, finished the cut. This is an important piece to make sure you don't skip out on. This adds a lot of strength to the entire structure of the cart. And here we go. Now I'm ripping up plywood for all the drawers. I chose here to cut them all at the same time, making sure they're all at the same lengths and making everything super easy. Again, I'm having to flip another piece here because of the capacity of my saw. Okay, so I just cut all the drawers. They're ready to go. And I am gonna use my staple gun and uh, assemble the drawers. Yes, I said staple gun. I'm uh, <laughs> 
this is shop furniture so I'm not getting fancy with uh, super super overdone joints here I'm also using half inch here even though I'm gonna probably call for three quarter in the plans uh, but this is what I had left and these drawers eat a lot of plywood so I'm using every bit I can and I'm using that same three quarter inch spacer underneath uh, the receiving drawer slide and I'll slide it into my cabinet nice and easy Anytime I can get one of my littles out here in the shop is an awesome time. Uh, Emma is enjoying using the pocket hole machine. She's super helpful and loves uh, helping out when she can. Normally she's picking up the stuff off the ground for her dad's back. And here I am starting on the side of cabinets. Uh, please don't pay too close attention to this process right here. Uh, I changed it a little bit, but it's reflective in the design. But uh, attaching it to the frame and the base um, will stay prevalent. All right, so I just want to give you an update on the other side is complete, um, minus uh, making the drawers. Super crazy strong. So. Um, obviously, if you're going to use this for a CNC machine, you do not want any flex at all or wiggle. And so this will be where our pole mounts. So therefore, there's going to be quite a bit of inward force pulling this this way. Um, and we just don't want that to ever try and sag. That pole itself is going to add just a ton of strength. Now these drawers do not look all that large, but they hold quite a bit. They're deep and wide. Uh, they're going to be perfect for uh, all my end mill bits and accessories for the CNC itself, as well as some of my electronics and charging cords that I will keep in these drawers. Okay, y'all. So I decided to do something a little bit different here. I'm going to uh, build a slide out for it can be an additional writing surface or you can actually, depending on your laptop size, which it'll fit most, put your laptop in there and close it up. I'm going to frame something a little bit different. I'll show you what I'm thinking. To pretend this is upside down. So just like a normal drawer and then add, I think, two cross braces evenly spaced out. It will go up here, four inches. A space I left an inch gap back there and that will allow for any cable runs power uh, HDMI's anything like that to be here I am branding the right side of the cabinet with uh, Fox Hall Woodworking's logo he was an absolute awesome person to team up with on this project check him out on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube uh, he does awesome video editing and also design work uh, for all the plans that you're going to see here with the links. We uh, got the table off the assembly table thanks to my wife and uh, Harbor Freight hydraulic lift. Uh, it is heavy. Make sure you bring a lot of friends to help you with it. Uh, I'll also link on uh, JP's site how I attach the caster wheels. How's it going YouTube? I am now finished completely with the cabinet and frame assembly. It's together, all the drawers are in, and most importantly, it's off my bench. So now I am turning to the torsion box top, the flip top. I have a track saw, just a cheap uh, shop box, and that's what I'm choosing to use. Um, you can also obviously just use a straight edge and a and a saw. Um, I did that a little bit earlier on the longer piece um, to break it down. I just clamped that to the piece of board. So anyways, um, lots of different methods. This is a bigger piece, so 
might need to get a little creative. I mean, technically you can run it through your table saw backwards, or not backwards, but on the opposite side of the fence. Um, but that's how I'm choosing to do it. Should be able to get it nice and square. And here we go. I marked halfway down the torsion top and I uh, put in my bottom of my tunnel spacer. And these spacers are going to work out perfectly because you're going to use them based off of the plywood that you use. So you're going to add your first layer here, mark it dead center down the middle, pre drill, and then put some uh, short screws through them so it holds nice and tight. And then you'll cut your side tunnel to length. And again, I uh, choose to screw my screws towards the tunnel so it'll be nice and perfectly aligned. Flip it and do the other side. And then we're going to sink in your first, your second spacer, I should say. I did not have full lengths, so I just chopped up a few and put them in there. Either way, full length strip or just piecing together a few and putting them in there is going to be just fine. And I actually marked where I put my other screws so I didn't screw these into those screws. And again, screwing this spacer down. And if you are having to piece it together like me, just make sure you're bottoming out all those spacers in there so they're sitting all flush. And then if you drop the pipe in, you can put your next spacer in on top of that, and that's going to be flush with that tunnel. Then you add this three-quarter piece to cap off the tunnel, and you got a perfectly aligned center. And you don't have to do a lot of measuring because this is all based off your plywood thicknesses, so fractions of an inch aren't going to matter here because you base it off of your plywood. And then I'm off to the rest of the torsion box, getting the front sides and inner grid all put in. And it's worth taking your time here. Um, if anything, your bottom and top piece, you could actually run those a little bit uh, larger than the structure itself. And then uh, you could go back with a flush trim router bit and, and flush it with uh, your torsion box. And then pocket hole in the inner grid, taking in consideration of when I'm screwing it towards the bar itself. Yo, I marked uh, on the cart where I want my dowels to go into to lock the top from spinning. Um, I then transferred that mark to my two back pieces. Now I'm going to drill through them evenly so that they're the same on each side. And then I'll mount them and then I'll have locations to start drilling through the, uh, the cart once I get to that process. And this is a place where if you want to get fancy with the uh, torsion top and run any kind of wiring, LED lights, uh, anything like that. There is enough room uh, in this grid to be able to do, you know, some, some things like that if you want to have this open underneath to uh, store some things. 
uh, like you've seen on a Polk style workbench or even James King's uh, assembly table. Um, this would be the time to go ahead and do that before you finish the assembly and run all that stuff. And now I put the bottom on real quick and uh, marked out where the grid is. And I'm going to pre-drill and countersink uh, four screws. And I'm using inch and a quarter inch uh, spack screws. And here I am, I'm using my flush trump bit to flush the top to these sides. And then I'm using a little quarter inch round over just to soften the edges. And here's how I'm gonna start mounting the flange and the center pole. I'm just using a square, whatever I had handy, to find the center and have something rested on so I can get those screws in. And get a friend and get the uh, top. Take that bottom piece off that you had screwed on. Just ride it over the tunnel and then slide it on. Should have a nice friction fit right there. And now uh, I'm putting the tunnel piece back on. I locked the top into place. Um, I screwed a screw right through the center section up here, and then I clamped it to the side cabinet. Do you remember before we drilled a hole in the same place on each side? I need to transfer this hole into it, and then I need to make sure it's even on both sides. And you could actually just transfer that center of that hole into your leg assembly there, move the top out of the way, and then drill your hole through. It'd be a little bit easier than uh, trying to make it all the way through because there is a little bit of a gap there. Once you get that done, you flip it over and get that top on. to install the laptop stand onto my side cabinet. This is going to be the cabinet that I think I'm going to use the most. So I'm going to mount the laptop stand, run most of my electronics through here. On the opposite side, I'll have my screens. The directions for this stand were pretty easy. Again, this will be linked in our uh, description here, but uh, I'm just trying to figure out how I want to incorporate it on my side cabinet. I ordered this specifically so it wasn't the clamp, but it was the bolt that goes through. So I'm just measuring the placement I want for it and where I want that bolt to go through. One thing I did have to do was I shortened the bolt, uh, which it wasn't surprising to me. Uh, this way I can still slide things in and out of that lower tray. And then I'm just taking a little bit of uh, a chamfer onto my dowel pins, make them uh, slide in and out of those holes nice and easy. Then I drilled a quarter inch uh, hole through the three quarter inch dowel and I slid in a quarter inch dowel into it and then held it into place with a little bit of CA glue 
learned this trick from uh, James King on King's Fine Woodworking. This was a great solution, so I just decided to just carry it on to my to my uh, cart. And then I finish it off with a heavy coat of wax. This will make it slide in and out of those pinholes very easy. And here I am ripping my drawer faces. I'm trying to keep track of the continuous grain so that I can make it look as nice as I can on the front. So what I did was I marked the entire width and height and then I cut directly in the middle of all of those leaving a 1 8 curve gap in between all of the faces. What I'm doing here and referencing off the ground, uh, <laughs> use a better method because I end up having to rip these off and do them again. But uh, I did just end up clamping them, drove a couple of staples in the back side and then I screwed them. Here's the uh, drawer face for the uh, laptop stand or additional table there. I just used a piano hinge to attach that. And here we are finishing it up with my favorite sandpaper, Clingspore Braces. They are part of a sponsorship for this video and I can't thank them enough for providing me uh, all the sandpaper. It was an absolute pleasure using this. I've uh, not found a really nice alternative uh, other than the um, Festool paper. And I finally have, this is much more affordable and it puts such a be better finish on it. So thanks Mike for sponsoring this video and uh, look forward to many years of your braces. And I hit hit it first with 120 and then I finished at 180. I'm going to use Armor Seal for my top coat here and I never go above a 180 just so it penetrates it super deep and uh, I don't mind putting additional coats on. I just want to make sure that it penetrates it good enough and sure enough shortly after making the, the video I. I had some finish left in a solo cup and it's dripped through and I thought I stained the top for sure but I was able to sand through the finish and it protected the wood and I was able to just put some more back on it. Get a friend help you get over the X-Carve and uh, position it where you want it then use those gussets and the uh, five millimeter by 10 millimeter uh, screw with the uh, sliding T-nut in there and then I used a washer head screw to lock it down. The benefit of the torsion bottom is, is if you do uh, surface a waste board for part of your operation, this will always stay flat as long as you uh, keep it where it is on that torsion top. Locking these down will ensure that all your rails stay completely flat and level until something changes. So you can essentially have one waste board on there for a long, long time, spin it in every direction and you'll be able to continuously use it. More and more coats. I think I did four on top and three on uh, everything else. And again, this is Armor Seal. Just want something super easy and fast. I waited about three to four hours in between coats and that was fun. And I made sure I went in between each coat with 220 to make it nice and smooth and uh, make sure it adhered to itself. And I apologize for not getting it on video, but I was piecing it together. So this is the gantry holder that will lock the gantry when you're rotating around the uh, X-Carve on the 360 top. This will lock it in every direction, keeping everything nice and safe and secure. Also not allowing it to move to possibly give any feedback into the X-Controller and fry anything out. Um, I'm finishing it here with some, uh, some of the general finishes as well. This is Purple Heart and uh, Tiger Maple. They're absolute just scraps I've had in my shop for over three years. So you can make this out of plywood, anything you'd like. I have detailed instructions on how I made these. These are super simple uh, and a really easy way to take them on and off, but uh, really work well.
All right, and here we are at the end. It was a pleasure showing you this build. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell uh, for future videos I have coming up. All the hardware uh, and materials used in this video will be linked. So all you'll have to do ahead of building this is look those up, uh, order them, and they'll be ready for assembly. I hope everything in this video was helpful to you. Please leave us a comment if we can help out in any further way. Thanks so much. Take care.